Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome back to another episode of Midnight Reality, where I know upon the upload, it'll be around lunchtime in New York City. It is midnight somewhere around the world. People in New York think the whole world revolves around them, and this whole video doesn't make any sense because it's issued at noon instead of at midnight. They can't comprehend there's other people listening. The entire world revolves around New York City to those who live there. Now, these theories, what I'm about to talk about, what the hell, what I'm about to talk about is so strange, so out there, that if these theories would have been presented, say, at the wrong place or at the wrong time in history, it would have sent the person presenting the theory, in this case, me, into an insane asylum or a prison. But at this moment in time, in 2024, it's just a social prison where you have no friends, family, or human interactions if you believe some of these things. So we're already in that prison, so we might as well put our feet up and enjoy ourselves. I remind those listening, this is not a 1.25 speed them up exercise. If you try to put this sort of presentation on 1.25 just to get, to get through it, to see what Matt has to say, and then get on to your stuff, there's something wrong with you. Before getting started, I want to talk a few minutes about the bullshit concept of enlightenment and kind of how it's presented, what most people believe that means. If you prefer the Philly pronunciation, you say enlightenment. You change the E-N to I-N, you keep the light, you cut out the E-N in the middle completely, then you put a mint on the end, like a York peppermint patty. So someone on South Philly say, yeah, I want to find enlightenment. That's what, They wouldn't even know the word, but if they said it, that's the way they would say it. The Philly, we need to learn a Philadelphia uh, lingo or, or accent in almost every single video. Um, my mother, oh, she says, the Philadelphia accent has not invaded my diction. I still speak. Uh, we have an English lineage, Matt, and I still speak the Queen's English. And then she'll actually get on people from Philly from time to time that where that accent comes out. This is not, Let me just tell this quick story. Then we'll get into the very important parts of midnight reality. Riding air, airport limo to the Philadelphia airport. My mother's being polite. Oh, what's your name, young man? And he says, uh, I'm Anthony. And, she's, and she knows it's, she's been around Philip. She knows it's Anthony. She says, your name's what? I, I'm, I'm, my name's Anthony. And she said, did you say Anthony? An oh, and, he knows, and then he's upset with her because he knows she's kind of poking at him. Oh, it's Anthony. I said, Mom, please, just we need to just get to the airport. Shut up. You know, in South Philly, Anthony is Anthony. Let's let it alone. Sorry. What's the biggest problem with how enlightenment has been presented, what most people believe is being enlightened, that it's kind of like a moment someone has, right? And once they have it, right, they're therefore enlightened as they move through life. This world does not work that way. There is no one shining moment where you look down at your arm and it kind of phases into a being of light for a few minutes, and then you maybe float up into the air a little bit, but then you come back into the material, and then, oh, wow, from this moment on, I'm enlightened. What a bunch of of absolute bullshit. And I know if you've people that have read their little esoteric tomes and they're Matt, Matt, it's not presented that way in this. I don't that's generally the way it's presented. This life is a slow slog of tiny little incremental learning opportunities that go right into the day and moment of death. There is no moment of enlightenment. We get an understanding of what the world is and the fraud that it presents. We get an understanding of who we really are. Then we start the slow slog, the daily grind of overcoming fear in tiny little bits and increments and doing the worry about yourself activities in small steps, just getting a little tiny bit better. There's no enlightenment. What a bunch of bullshit that is. It gets people to think there's a moment they should be, and they'll know when it happens. You'll, oh, how do I know when you get on the freeway? Oh, you'll know it when you see it. I, there's no moment. There's no moment. It's ridiculous. It's, it, again, this whole reality presents false uh, objectives, false things to shoot for. Even the dumb Zen quote. I mean, I use it too, and it's generally a pretty good quote, but we'll, we'll get on it here. Before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water, eat at McDonald's. After enlightenment, Chop wood, carry water, eat at McDonald's. But no, to never order the McRib because it's not real meat. It, it's, oh, it's this, so that person had a moment, right? They had a, see, they're doing the same thing, but now they move through life enlightened. What a bunch of bullshit. If somebody's yelling at me, I can hear you. It depends on your own definition of enlightenment, Matt. If enlightenment is a lower level, it's just a general notion that this world is a gigantic fraud that presents a trick. 
and that what it wants from you is not really what you should want from yourself. It, okay, I hear you. If you define it on your own, then that makes sense. I'm just saying, what is it as it comes from uh, the screen? What do people think enlightenment is? And what do sh- did I just say it like the Philly? And what they should be shooting for. And then when they find it, oh, they'll know. No, there's nothing to find, and then you, you'll know. Uh, it, the learning should come right up to the moment of death, and it never stops. And the mystery of this place will never truly be overcome, and we will never truly know more than a small fraction of who we truly are, and we will never know more than a small fraction of how the mystery of this place works. We know a lot more than the wages and the normies uh, that accept every bit of it, but there's no, okay, let me not be too repetitive here, there's no moment of enlightenment. Take your enlightenment and shove it up your ass. Enlightenment. Enlightenment. Shut up. Okay, crazy out there theory number one. And guys, one last bit of fine print, 30 seconds or less. I mean, some of these are so out there, unless you are the oldest of the old guard. I mean, but but one other thing, I'm not saying this is exactly what I believe. I'm saying I keep this on the table as possible in this reality because I've seen too many weird things. And usually what I keep on the table as possible it becomes more and more probable as the months and years go by, if you see what I mean. There's very few I've said, this nutty idea, I'm going to float it to you. And as the years went by, I said, oh, that was horseshit. It usually becomes more possible. So, okay, let me just jump into it. What is the truth research community generally told about the origins of Lyme disease, the bacterium that deer ticks carry, that literally millions of people uh, in the Northeast of the United States have suffered Uh, millions over the last, say, 20 to 25 years. When something keeps coming up like it's we're we're being fed a story, I can kind of sniff it out and smell it and say, wait a second, this is a little too convenient. Okay, so I'm saying it potentially came from reality itself to match the ugliness of where the collective conscience is going. Yeah, Matt, present present it right up front where you're going. We can't follow it unless you... A deer tick bites you... Um, millions a year or something get Lyme disease, those where it's undetected, it can cause all sorts of problems, long-term chronic problems down the road. Millions, not 10,000 have suffered, millions of people have suffered from this. And I'm not saying it's always chronic. Usually most people, you take your three weeks of doxycycline and you feel better. I mean, it's just a humongous problem from Maine uh, through parts of Canada down through, you know, maybe parts of South Carolina. And it's, it's, it's luckily, I know that the deer tick that contains the Lyme bacterium, you know, is, is probably been spotted in 35 other states. But it's not like, I mean, you just simply don't go in the woods and high grasses um, if you live in Pennsylvania through Connecticut. There's still a lot of people that hike. I don't know how they do it. I mean, you almost have to give yourself every time I go, I have to pull a deer tick off me, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. But we're fed a story in this truth community. And when I keep hearing, I said, this is a little too convenient. When we keep being fed a story, then that story to me uh, is, re- I recognize it as a not milk story or tactic. And that story is a cover-up or to get our uh, attention or to distract away from something else. All right, I sat here for a minute quietly. I need to summarize this and just say plainly and simply and succinctly what I mean, because I'm being too long-winded, it's hard to talk about, and I'm going to lose people. Lyme disease is new. When I roamed the woods in the late 70s and early 80s as a kid, there were no deer ticks. There were no tick bites. Okay, now if you just walk through high grasses for 10 feet, you have two deer ticks on you. It's new. Lyme disease, it didn't exist when we were playing in the woods in the 70s. Okay, that's, that's medical science. That's, that's not conspiracy. It's new. Now, what have we heard through all different facets of the truth community, even referenced by Dr. Lecter to a degree in Silence of the Lambs, that, oh, there was a, a defense research lab, and they were working and experimenting on ticks, and it was right off the coast of Lyme, Connecticut, I guess in some island between New York State and Connecticut. And Lyme, Connecticut is a real city. That's why it was called Lyme disease. Oh, a bird must have got bitten by one of these ticks, and these these horrible Frankenstein monsters in DARPA were experimenting with tick-borne, a weaponized ticks. And all. I'm, I'm telling you, it's becoming too convenient of a story for them. I'm saying I leave on the table, it spawned 
from reality itself. And as the collective consciousness of real beings got darker and more negative, then diseases and things like Lyme disease or even the deer tick itself, I'm telling you the deer tick didn't exist in the 70s when I was playing in the woods. And if anybody's screaming at me, let's get this out of the way. Let's get this little fight out of the way first. Well, Matt, by your little theory, you're taking the creeps off the hook. I knew you were working for the creeps. Oh, oh so I'm really not supposed to float what I believe because it possibly could be interpreted as taking something away from the creeps. Um, I've indicted the creeps in absolutely every aspect of destroying society and culture thousands of times over for as long as I've been doing this. If I had to put on the table, what do I think is more likely? That the creeps engineered a weaponized syphilis bacterium put into a tick and it got out or they sent it out into the population themselves to harm people or it spawned from reality itself as a, a way to, uh, to uh, real, a real, a reality realigned with the darkness of where the collective consciousness of real beings were going, I would still pick the, the story that we're given in the truth community, that these Frankenstein uh, monsters in, in, in weaponized some sort of, of syphilis bacteria that became Lyme disease and was given to the Northeast United States or got out. I, if I had to pick, I would still pick that. I'm just telling you, the story is becoming too much like a story. And there's parts that, that I have issues with. Yeah, if it, if it spawns from reality itself, I'm not letting the creeps off the hook because whose job is it to reduce the frequency of human consciousness, to get it into a darker place? The creeps, either way, they're responsible. So don't even give me that. Okay, let's back up, look at the facts. Yes, I should have said this earlier. The dog tick or the wood tick, the very large tick has been around forever, of course. I uh, pulled it off my grandmother's dogs, big, huge ticks, full of blood. They get almost the size of a dime. I mean, if you can see the thing crawling around, you clearly see it. It's a wood tick or a dog tick, same thing. And most of them don't carry Lyme disease. They can carry other bacteria or diseases like Rocky Mountain, spotted fever or whatever. Deer ticks are like, imagine, okay, I'm a, I just sharpened a pencil, a number two pencil. I just, or, or a pen with a fine little point. I just go, doop, a tiny little dot with a pen on your arm. Um, you can't see it, they're so small. That's completely a different species than the, deer, the dog tick or the wood tick. If they existed, I would have had thousands on me as a kid, not one. I'm telling you right now, it's, it's, see, what, this is rarely talked about in terms of people that have this discussion. They say, oh, Lyme disease, yeah, even the medical community admits uh, just came up. It, it was first uh, identified, I guess, in the early 80s, and they didn't know what it was, and they didn't know antibiotics could treat it. Um, nobody talks about this. The deer tick didn't exist I've said to other people, do you remember ever get a deer tick on you? No, we played in the woods all day long. I've, I've asked people that grew up on farms that in Pennsylvania and Connecticut. And I, I mean, okay, I haven't, I haven't done a gigantic Gallup poll on it, but they've said it was out in the weeds every single day, never had, a, had plenty of big ticks. That's a different species. The tick didn't exist. So not only would they have to have manufactured the weaponized, they would had to have created the species. Is, is that likely? From what I know they can always do more than what we understand they can do. But to create a, I don't see so this is where I start to put other things on the table. I don't think the creeps can create a species of animal. One last time, these tiny little ticks, deer ticks, there are hundreds of millions out in the woods, right within my line of sight. They never die. We can have a six-week drought here like last year when the fires came, the, the Canadian fire and the smoke came down. Six, seven weeks of almost no humidity and not a drop of rain, and everything starts to brown. It was dry as a bone. There's no possible way a little tick with just a half of one little microbe of, of, of water, it would, they would have all dried up. Maybe they would have been able to reproduce themselves. They all came right back, the first rain. There's something really, I would say, almost supernatural about the deer tick, and I am not in any way exaggerating. These things, it doesn't make any sense. Hundreds of millions of them uh, out there in the woods, but what are they eating? What are they, I mean, there's reality breakdowns every time you turn around regarding the deer tick, guys. What are they eating? Oh, Matt, they eat birds, and let's just say they, they get on some birds, and they get on some deer, and there's, there's not, it's like a whole city of New York City people with one food truck. 
Now, is that how's that going to work? How does the math on that work? All of New York City in one food truck. All of these, what are they, how can they go four or five months without eating? There's something, I don't, it's, it seems to be beyond what the creeps could engineer. And that's saying something. They're dark asses. Guys, one last summary before the next segment. I don't know how easy this is to understand. If you're old guard and you're getting it, just give me 30 seconds or one minute. Or, I, some people need this. Okay. The deer tick, in my opinion, did not exist before the Lyme disease ec- epidemic started. They go hand in hand. For some reason, nobody talks about the bigger issue. Where were these deer ticks in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s? A deer tick is like a tiny little spot. It's not a big, if you see a big tick crawling around on you, that's a dog tick or a wood tick. That's always been here. Okay. Another thing I didn't mention, why don't the big ticks, the wood ticks, carry Lyme disease too? They suck on the same things. A deer tick's just called that. It doesn't mean they just prefer deer and they wouldn't get on a bird. or they would, They'll suck the blood of anything. All these, they will burrow in and they suck blood. That's the only way these things can feed. Before I said, well, how are the hundreds of millions that are out my window uh, all feeding on the same? There's one squirrel out back, and there's a few deer that come through once a week. What are they all eating? So uh, if, did anybody say they eat other things like they, they've learned to eat bark or they eat? No, they don't. There's only one way. I don't think this was clear. There's only one way a tick can feed, to burrow into a real animal and drink its blood. There's not enough animals or for, to go around to support any of these ticks, it seems like the larger tick population is down a bit. What are they eating? How can something survive for three quarters of a year without eating? It's a complete reality breakdown to me. Now, here's the back end is the story we're given is a little too convenient. You know, like, oh, we, I guess we got him again. The, it, that story was leaked. Let's say they did weaponize a, it's, a syphilis-related bacteria in the belly of a deer tick, okay? If it's on you for so many hours, it exchanges its gut bacteria with your blood and you get Lyme disease. I'll talk more on the back end. I'll tell you everything I know about it and it's some useful information because I've studied it for 10 years. I've had 12 to 14 deer ticks in me and I've never gotten Lyme disease because I believe I follow the right protocols. I'll tell you about it on the back end if anybody's interested or you hike, etc. What I was saying was, what do we know? Okay, if you've been doing truth research, oh yeah, Matt, I've seen videos on that, or I've seen, I've read a blog on that about how, again, one last time, the weapons research lab on some island uh, right off the coast of Lyme, Connecticut, that may have been New York State proper, it doesn't matter. Oh, apparently a, a weaponized tick, they were, they did experiment on the deer tick. They did implant the Lyme disease for some sort of future weapon they were going to use in some foreign country. And then, of course, one, what we're told, one got out. Oh, it is never contained, is it? Or a bird came by and, and then the tick it bit the bird and then was carried to the Connecticut mainland. And then it started to spread. And it, to a degree, it did spread. The cases were local in Connecticut at first, and then it then it, down through Pennsylvania, New York State, etc. And it continues to spread. But the story is a little too convenient. I'm sorry. First off, let's just say they they were it was a weaponized tick program with different forms of the syphilis bacteria. What are the chances that's going to leak out to our community? See, guys, you've heard me talk about mistakes on purpose. Oh, it just got out. Really? How would it get out? I'm not talking about the tick getting out or a tick escaping. I'm talking about how the story get out into our community. They're just so prone to leaks because every time we've looked at a leak or, oh, we caught them, guess what almost, I'd say every time, or maybe there are exceptions, but I'm not aware of them at this time, we were meant to get that information. For example, look at Operation Northwoods, for example. Oh, Truth Community was so pleased with itself eight to 10 years ago. Oh, leaked documents showing they were doing a false, uh, was it uh, with Castro? They were going to do a false flag to incriminate Castro. Uh, Hey, bot, I'm allowed to talk about Operation Northwoods because your own minion creeps want people like me talking about it. Oh, we caught him. Oh, uh, General Lemnitzer. No, give me a break. We didn't catch anybody completely given to the truth community so we could run with it for whatever their creepy intentions were. I don't buy somebody in the truth community. Oh, there's a leak. How would it ever be leaked? 
if they, that, let's just say that Lyme disease was spreading and they're having a private meeting and saying, shit, we caused this. You think it would ever get out something of that magnitude, but truthers are making videos. Reality doesn't work that way, folks. Therefore, you have to keep other things on the table. Actually, based on this, let me issue the final exam right now in the Amish classroom for first grade truthers. It's like the little schoolhouse they took us to back of Robert's School in Upper Marion. They said, let's go look at the, the original little schoolhouse in from King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. We're all sixth grades. We're in one little classroom together. Well, that's the way our Amish classroom works. We're going to issue the final exam right now. First grade truthers, most of you spitballers in the back, first grade truthers come up to the front. I've issued the final exam. It's one fucking question. Here, take this piece of paper. You know what the piece of paper says on it? If you believe you caught them in something, if you believe your research, you've, you have this I caught him moment, oh, we got you moment, here's the question, did you really catch him? And then the first grade truthers look up and they go, uh, no? That's right, no, you didn't really catch him. They want you to believe you caught him. Now go sit down and go to second grade, you little sons of bitches. If you think you caught him, you didn't. You took their bait. And in a way, it's like the rule of opposites. The more the story makes its way around the truth community that, oh, here's what happened, Matt, weaponized tech program. And they even dropped a hint in Silence of the Lambs. We'll talk about that in a minute. The more that story makes its way around, you know what? The less of a chance that's really what happened. And this, in a way, could be part of another series, the Reality Gives Itself Away series, slash No Real World Could Do That. Let's do a mini exercise here before continuing with the main topic of our discussion. Name one thing that where the truth community, oh, we caught them where they didn't want to be caught. Go ahead. I mean, okay, I'm not going to respond to what the first, second, third, fourth grade truth is going to throw out. We caught Ribby Bobby Ribby Bobby. No, we didn't. Uh, that was on purpose. We flated tire. On purpose. Um, People, Matt, people are on the ISS grabbing for objects that are not really floating in front of them. And we have the video where there's nothing there. Oh, yeah. Okay. We really got them there. We took the bait. Enough said. I guess some folks are not going to buy that. They're going to, you want to go keep believing that you just little sleuths, little Sherlock Holmes, and you keep believing that they're shaking in their boots because you're going to go back and do more research. An adversary that pulls off 10,000 things a week. You could argue that if you, by certain definitions, and basically never slips up or makes a mistake that expose what's going on to, say, the masses um, in a major league way, that no real world could do that. And no real world, once we see reality for what it is, uh, well, yeah, I'm going to try to work it in. It's the greatest news of all time for a real person like you and me. Let's talk about the silence of the lambs theme. Too convenient. And the only way you know, anybody could come back on the other side is say, Matt, they have to tell us. And I'm like, okay, then we'll keep that on the table. If it was just a little subtle thing in Silence of the Lambs and there was no other books on it and you know, truth research and little things here and there, if that was just it, okay, then they have to, in a subtle way, tell you. But it's, I just took a few minutes and I looked, and of course, it's so much more than that. Um, in Silence of the Lambs, so, you know, she offers him the bogus deal, Plum Island which has the nickname, as Dr. Lecter is well aware, uh, Clarice Anthrax Island. Was that, that was your idea? That was good. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Dr. Lecter. Um, he calls it himself Anthrax Island. It's a bacteria. It's a weaponized bacteria. So just, I forgot all that was here. I took a few minutes and I looked and, oh, here it comes. Let me read it to you. How convenient. The 2004 book, Lab 257, The Disturbing Story of the Government's Secret Plum Island Germ Laboratory by Michael Carroll, examines the Plum Island Animal Disease Center. That's where they were going to set Dr. Lecter up. Going down, going down. Oh, look at this. Plum Island is the title and focus of one episode of the television series Conspiracy Theory with, with Je Jesse Ventura. Oh, he's working for us. Oh, Jesse Ventura's on the case. I can sleep all, oh, can sleep so well tonight. See, that gives it away right there. If Jesse Ventura is pushing out, oh, this is the dark things that happened on Plum Island. And it, it tells you right there that's no way that that's what happened. He's not working for you. He's working for them. If they want to promote it, that's not the story, guys. 
right there. I didn't know Jesse Venturi did a little show. Venturi? Whatever. You don't deserve to be pronounce his name correctly. And it's probably not even his real name. It's probably his damn WWF stage name, the fat bastard. Um, if he did a, a, a show in his little conspiracy theory series, tells I, I don't need to know anymore. That's not what happened. If it really leaked out, and that's there's no possible way that it would be promoted through these shills of the not nilk. Um, our question one has already been answered, so we can continue from here. Look, I sat here for a minute. The only possibility is I could hear somebody screaming at me, Matt, maybe it's a double reverse psychology that they, oh, it's leaked out and now they have to do damage control. I, I don't buy this, but I have to keep all legitimate things on the table. So you get complete uh, clowns and shills like Jesse Ventura to do his little conspiracy theory show. And then you have people at Thanksgiving table say, oh, you Uncle Ted, you got Lyme disease. Let me tell you what the government did. The government's responsible for that. Well, how do you know that, boy? Uh, you want mashed potatoes? Uh, because I saw the Jesse Ventura show. Oh, hell, you, you watch. It could be a double reverse, consp- uh, double reverse conspiracy theory. Double reverse psychology exercise where the person asking for the more gravy for the mashed potatoes says, I saw it on Jesse Ventura. So the rest of the table goes, oh, hell no. That, you watching that conspiracy junk? Is Alex Jones talking about it too? I'm sure he is. So uh, there's, yeah, I, I don't think it's that simple here in this case. And if they trying to cover something up, guys, do they drop it right out in Silence of the Lambs? Really? You can't say it was subtly put into the movie because Matt, in a roundabout way, you know, they have to tell us the truth. There's people that wrote complete books about the weapons, DARPA, whatever, research lab, Plum Island. And in the whole book, the theory is the Lyme bacterium escaped through ticks or whatever happened. It's not, they don't, it's not subtly being dropped because they have to tell us. There's been entire episodes and Jesse Ventura and this whole list here on Wikipedia of how media, mass media, is basically promoting the theory that a tick got out and they were trying to weaponize something. And if for something so monumental that it affected so many millions of people, um, it is it is hard to reconcile. If somebody's screaming at me, I can kind of hear you saying, Matt, why would they even take the chance of wanting millions of people to think that they, the government, caused what is real suffering for millions of people? Why are they even trying to link themselves to it? Uh, guys, the, you know, the... The not milk works in mysterious ways. And on the fly, I, I can't always uncover its motives. I'm pretty good, usually. But this one, this one is a little difficult. I don't want to get too, too far into the weeds. The point is, these stories keep coming, and when they keep coming so strongly, then to me something else is going on. So I'm going to look in places nobody would ever look. I'm going to look in the strangest places that would seem insane to anybody but you guys. Back to the initial theory. It's possible... In a way, reality itself morphed, and it, it not just Lyme, other diseases. How many new diseases and drugs to treat the, the, those diseases? How many things have come for anybody over age 50? Um, we'll talk about the difference in how everybody has this disease and that disease and commercials about diseases you've never heard of. Maybe per the co- collective consciousness lowers and gets darker, and the frequency gets more out of line with, uh, you know, however you want to describe it, the Schumann residence. And it, it, the Not Nilk's main goal is to take the collective consciousness and get it into the gutter as quickly as possible to make it a dark frequency. And it's a yin and yang reality. You put collective consciousness into a lower, darker, fiddle and bends low place. Well, what's the yang on the back end in reality itself? Maybe a Mandela effect. You're going to need a bigger boat, but maybe a new disease. See, yin and yang reality. That's how this reality works. So there's not going to be an equal and opposite reaction to the lowering and darkness of a collective consciousness of real spiritual beings. What's the back end rubber band snap back to that? I'm saying potentially... A, a, t- a tick that didn't exist that carries a disease. Sp- sp- what what the, is these horseshit? Spawning out of thin air? Essentially, yes. Okay, guys, this is so strange. Let me do another little summary in a different way. I don't know how this is being communicated. I don't know. I think the old guard would still kind of say, yeah, we'll keep that on the table, Matt. But who knows? Who knows? But let me just, if, if for those struggling saying, Matt, this is, uh, you know, I'm, I'll stick with you for a lot of your big theories, but this is absolute horseshit. Let me back up. Okay, we start with the absolute basics. We know for a fact that our adversary here, the spiritual adversary called Not Nilk, for a fact, one of its main goals is to get the collective consciousness of how many ever real people are here, real spiritual beings, to lower 
their frequency, to go a, a rung down, to get darker, to bind more with the material side, to cut off the spiritual side. We know that is an absolute fact, okay, 100%. So when the collective, co- we know also a fact is consciousness came first. There was no Big Bang and then Monkey Man and all the Consciousness came first before everything, before the material. That's a fact, okay? So if consciousness, in a way, creates everything, and there would be, nothing would even exist here without real spiritual beings, and then the not milk is successful in lowering the frequency or harmonics, or however you want to talk about it. And it's just everybody around us, they're hopefully they're real beings like we are, but they're getting darker. They're accepting what the not milk is offering, and it's, thank you, sir, may I have another? And they're just letting the, the slide into the abyss happen. They're, I'm saying per the yin and yang, which is basically the oldest symbol that exists, and if it's the oldest symbol that exists, it is a rock-solid um, ex- basis, example of how this reality works. If you move something of such utter importance, the collective consciousness over here, then something else has to move in equal and opposite reaction. It could be not just diseases. It could, this could explain a lot of things that pop up out of nowhere, where nobody seems to be in on it. The with the, the with the study of the Tran Paco Taco Paco Army, and everybody doesn't know what restroom to use, and all these nobody's in on it. I doubt there's any master plan that came from the Rothenstein or Steiners that said, here's what we're going to do, and we're going to have one out of five kids in school not knowing what restroom to use. It's almost like it's a reaction or a snapback to reality itself and the collective consciousness of real beings moving into a darker place. It's not just potentially deer ticks that came out of nowhere and Lyme disease that came out of nowhere. It literally didn't exist. A manifestation of reality itself potentially is what I'm saying, we could do a whole YouTube series. There could be hundreds of other things that spawned in a similar way. Not that anybody was in on it, because it was the reaction produced by a collective consciousness getting lower and closer to the gutter. That's my theory, and I'm sticking with it for now until they lock me away. I came across an old notebook recently, and I have mentioned again uh, in the last few weeks, our old, from years and years ago, the first rule of truth, where... What's being presented by the news? Oh, if this element, you know this element is cake in a lake, fake, and not legitimate and completely bogus, then you can pretty easily, in most cases, bridge it. The whole thing is bogus and fake. First rule of truth. Decent sized segment over here is fake. The whole thing is. You know, I don't know if that's ever been broken. Maybe it has, but it's not too often something like that is broken. You can sort of apply the same theory here. Let's just say we hit on one or two cases. Maybe you don't like the whole tick Lyme disease thing as this has become a bigger discussion about how reality itself reacts to where a collective consciousness moves to a lower place. If one example we think this spawned out of reality because of a darkness that came over the nothing of the never-ending story came over a collective consciousness that is now a rung lower in terms of its frequency or resonance, and this then reality sprung this forth, then if that if there's one case where that can happen, then it can be used to explain hundreds or even thousands of different things without anybody being in on it. What does this reality, the dark reality, the not milk work overtime in trying to do to us to get us to point at a bad guy? It, it almost, it will put out every bad guy, including putting out itself maybe, potentially with this Plum Island story and the weapons disease lab that introduced this syphilis-type bacteria into the small little species called deer tick. It might put itself up as a distraction instead of getting people to see that things dark, dark things can come into reality because of where the collective consciousness is taken. I think in a way this could be related to the Mandela effect, where most Mandela effects, especially by those unaffected, it seems is trivial. Always going to talk about more movie lines that didn't exist. But it could be reality's um, reaction, uh, the way I'm very allergic to poison ivy. Now, poison ivy doesn't harm anybody. It fools the body to harm itself. That is what most allergies are. Cat dander and hair doesn't harm anybody. An allergic reaction in many times uh, is the body being fooled into thinking the substance is harmful. So back to poison ivy, it's in no way harmful per the, you know, the chemical nature of it. The body really starts to harm itself. 
there are people like C-3PO's golden calf who believe the Mandela effect changes is like something talking to us and there's messages and he knows I'm not there yet. But this is, this is a middle ground where I'm going, where the Mandela effect uh, could be like an allergic, a reality's allergic reaction to what typically what our adversary and the creeps do. They take too big of a bite. They push too hard on one side of the yin and yang. If you pull the rubber band too far, it will snap back and it will hurt when it snaps back. I sat here for a second. I thought, I don't want to make this too crazy, but it's it's already beyond. <laughs> it's Why not just go the whole way, Matt? It can't get any stranger. So I mean, is the Mandela effect, I mean, this is, I'm just, guys, I don't even believe this. I'm just floating, you know, who knows what you'll uh, resonate with. Is the Mandela effect reality itself literally like a reaction to the creeps taking or doing too much, pulling too hard on the yin? I do know for a fact that this yin-yang is how reality works. Creeps, are the creeps trying to do things to reality and society and culture mess with people and kids don't even know what restroom to use. And yeah, they're, they're doing, um, some would say they've broken all their, what, if there were any contractual limitations, they're all broken and the creeps are breach of contract. I mean, it, 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 whatever we've talked in terms of their patience, uh, things have been different, uh, say, in this new century. You got toppings, old man, new century. They're taking too big of a bite. There's a consequence for that. What is it? Is it, is it potentially event horizon the movie comes to mind where they said to dr weir did you think you could play around with the laws of uh, time and space and there they put a singularity in the back of the damn spaceship a black hole to drive the spaceship i don't you know not i don't do no sidebar i don't buy that horse shit but the concept is is applicable here did you think you could mess with with the laws of the universe and not think there would be a consequence creeps it's the same thing Maybe they didn't account for the Mandela effect or any, they probably understand if there's any merit to what I'm saying, anything can come forth into reality that mimics or is a reactionary thing to the dark place that collective consciousness is putting, um, is put into. The creeps understand this. They they understand, uh, especially these sequential incarnations that Tony talked about that have past life memories and they're not. They're the lesser advanced spiritual being. They're not as advanced as you are because they're not willing to go Tommy, the deaf, dumb, and blind kid, and take the next spiritual leap and to give it all up. They're game addicted, but they understand. I mean, past life memories. They understand generally their how the reality works in terms of. Um, in other words, if if they can, if they move collective consciousness into lower place, and a new disease pops up and there's any merit to what I'm saying here, I, I don't think it would take them off guard. I think they would say, we, you know, we expected um, this, but maybe on, on the back end, maybe not to the same degree. I think they kind of have an understanding of how reality works, and it, that's how reality works, of course, is far, far, thousands of miles far from what a scientist at a university research park campus thinks the universe works. Whatever the creepy table is and whoever sits around it. Like I've said, there's a tiny, tiny little percentage here that understand a degree of how this reality works. Well, they laugh their asses off at the university research parks and the funding <laughs> the funding of college and university campuses and all those scientists. I'm sure the creeps would agree with every bit of what I'm saying. All those scientists at the university level are getting the funding. They're pursuing science that the creeps know is a complete waste of time that will get nowhere, always looking for smaller particles, not being able to understand the very small, the quantum, not, be under, un, not being able to understand the very large or the macro or the outer edges of the universe. They can never understand each side of the bookends. The creeps laugh their asses off, I, I bet. They know this type of science that, that just plays by the rules will go nowhere and will just spin its wheel like a retarded hamster forever and ever. The average age in our group uh, is in the late 40s. I mean, it might even be right about my age. We have some younger people here in their 20s, but it's very rare, very rare. If you're here and you're in your 20s or younger, uh, you have insight that is extremely rare to people like me and to many of us, okay? Be very proud of yourself. So with me mentioning the average age here, I don't have to give you guys uh, too many details here or convince 
you, but I'll spend a minute on it just for the folks that are in their 30s or a little bit younger. Um, let's say when I grew up in the 70s and early 80s, yeah, we knew every so many years, we knew somebody that got a cancer, you know, or somebody's cousin that knew somebody or somebody, a teacher at the high school. Uh, it was very rare, <laughs> guys. It was very rare. Um, and we knew somebody that at school, high school, was a diabetic, one kid in class, you know, had to take insulin or it was very rare. All of the diseases, okay, were, we, we heard of this person having this or that. We knew it was, I'd say it was 5% of what it is today. And what I'm saying in terms of the theme of this video, whether you uh, buy it or you think it's complete horseshit, I'm going to continue with the general theme of this video. It's not just that, oh, Matt, the GMOs and the foods and we eat poison and we drink poison and fluoride in the water, and of course that's going to lead to more disease. Don't forget the theme, the potential uh, outcome of this video if you resonate with what I'm saying at all. And again, I'm not saying this is how reality works. I'm just asking you to keep it on the table. And I'm, I'm seeing it more and more as a possibility as time goes on. That, okay, we're talking about Lyme disease, etc. Not just that. All of these diseases that we see today, and I don't want to, don't scream at me as a first grade truth or that uh, so many hundreds are completely made up so the drug companies can sell their drugs. I'm sure that happens, but there are more diseases, more people suffer with this and that. I'm saying it's not just from the poison food and the poison water and the whatever is in the air and the tails of chemicals and the duck tails. I'm saying if you buy any bit of what I'm saying in this presentation, that all these diseases across the board, not just Lyme, potentially spawned as the yang, the, the reality reaction to a collective con conscience of real people that has agreed to lower itself based on what the not milk wants. Let's look at AIDS. I'm no expert, but it hit right about the time uh, I was going into high school, or maybe I was a little bit younger, and everybody was scared that the sex act could be a death act. Was that the actual quote they, that the posters they put around my high school? Hey, kid, the sex act could be the death act. Keep your horse in the stable. I, uh, we, it, everybody was terrified, all right? Or, or okay, w you know, we were younger. We didn't really care much about anything, but it was a big deal. I, w I graduated high school in 1988. Now, again, have I spent half of my life looking into it? I, I just, I don't like the knee-jerk truther reaction, to AIDS. I'm sure there's people screaming at me right now, third grade, fourth grade truthers yelling at me like, this is my first rodeo and I've never made a conspiracy video before. Matt, don't you know? Haven't you seen the doctors that say it didn't exist, it doesn't exist, and the doctor injected himself? Don't you? No, I had no idea. You know, I had, this is my first first truth video. Yeah, I don't, it's too convenient, guys. Some There's some videos that pop up. The doctor injects himself. Matt, don't you know it's the treatment that the kills people? No, I never heard that before. The AZT and the treatments that it's all a little too convenient. Sorry for the truth community. I'm, I'm trying to, to go to the edge and, and beyond uh, being fooled. I'm trying to break the theme and the script that the truth community has followed for so long. No, just because there's a few videos pop out where it says, the guy that invented the test doesn't buy it. Well, what a, what a coincidence, the repeating theme of the see the VME in 2020. The guy that invented the PCR test has a problem with it. The reality repeats the same themes to a degree, to, to a degree that existed during the AIDS ep epidemic. And no, I don't just buy some, some truth or see four or five videos and nope, now there's no such thing. And it's the, it's the AZT that kills people. And well, how do you know that? Because I watched a few videos. It's, it's not that simple, guys. Sorry. It's not that simple. And let's just say it was. You think this thing called not milk and it's, it controls governments and the Pentagon, and it controls the entire money supply, and the ECB, and the, the Bank of Japan, and do you think it has a little influence? Would you say it has a little bit, right? You know, so this thing that has a tiny little influence over reality and, and the world um, controls governments, do you think it would let some doctor take a podium and say, oh, thank you, press, for coming here. There's no such thing as AIDS. You think it would, if it, if it had anything to lose, do you think it would let that happen? No, I don't, I don't either. If it really had something to lose, if it wanted to, for some reason, propagate another conspiracy branch of a tree, a conspiracy tree that keeps growing and growing, you know, it has the influence where if it doesn't want, to let, there's no doctor's going to take no podium if it doesn't want that to happen. 
I don't buy AIDS. It's that simple. It doesn't exist. It's just the AZT. Okay. I'm sorry. The people yelling at me, you, you know, the spitballers, you can't defend yourself here. I, I hear you. Okay. But I don't buy it. When, it, when it's that clean, no, something else is going on. So what, what do you, where do you think I'm going with this? AIDS could be um, similar to what I'm saying in terms of Lyme disease. What do we hear? Oh, it just it came out of nowhere, right? Oh, the vague stories of a monkey in uh, the Ugandan jungle. Uh, somebody on safari whipped out a banana uh, and, and decided it, it changed the whole world. They, they reached into their damn pouch and there was an old slice of pizza in there from yesterday or a banana and they chose the banana. The damn gorilla jumped on the guy's back, bit him in the neck, stole the banana. The bite, the AIDS was in the monkey. Then it got in the person. Of course, the person just starts screwing their ass. So they, they went back to New York City, screwed, uh, they just screwed up and down on 4th Avenue for years and they spread it around. Okay, that's how it happened because of a monkey bite. Guy would have chosen the damn old slice of Pizza Hut instead of the monkey. We'd all be fine today. But no, I, I, I'm sorry, guys. It, Matt, AIDS doesn't hurt anybody. It's just a, I don't buy it. Sorry. Yeah, was, was Magic Johnson a spokesperson? Of course he was. But it, it could be, again, if there's any merit to what I'm saying regarding how I started this with the Lyme disease, it could be another one if okay, let me back up. I'm sorry. The creeps understand how the reality works in this regard. If there's any merit to what I'm saying, they don't want people to observe. And who would have ever observed this? But they don't want anybody to observe that reality itself is changing. They always will. The creeps will supply a ready-made story about the monkey uh, in the in the far in the jungle or the weapons research lab experimenting. They they the creeps need a story. Because they don't want to, we don't want people believing reality itself changing based on the, the dark place we're putting the collective conscious. Now, Matt, you think regular people are going to arrive where you are anyway? No. No. I mean, even so, there, I might have hours left here before they come back down my door and take me away. Maybe, maybe if, if, this, if this is my last video, guys, we've, we know enough. We've learned enough. In terms of the several things I've said over the years that you find to be absolute horseshit, I hope you would still consider it to be a lesson in thinking big, even this. Like, Matt, I don't buy this, but boy, I never... It's good to think in a different way. You know, it's good to think in, in, in a big... Go to into a big place from time to time. I, I never would have even thought about this. I don't buy your horseshit. I don't buy this crap. But, but it, I appreciate you. The exercise in thinking big. Well, that's... Exercise in thinking big is worthwhile too even if it's horse shit. In terms of you know what I just said about AIDS, where if I had to choose it being a, 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 relig a real disease that can harm versus just what you know many of the community says, just all made up. Did you watch the doctor give that presentation in the late 80s? Uh, guys, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm big enough to keep that on the table too. This not milk is capable of just like making it up. I, but I'm not going to favor that. Just from, you know, I would say the, the people that were throwing, that want to throw the tomatoes and the heads of lettuce at me when I'm, you know, pinned in that, in that thing in the, from the Middle Ages where your head and your head and arms stick through the wood and you're clamped down. They want to, they want to throw the heads of lettuce at me. Let's say, guys, um, you can believe that, but please don't tell me it's just from watching a few videos where a doctor says he injected himself. Y you better come with, if you're going to say what affected in some way because everybody knew about the disease and every doctor knew about it and they were researching it and hundreds. Of, I mean, if you're going to say it was all just made up and it was actually the AZT that if you're going to say that, then come with something, you know, you better come correct. You better come with something other than you saw a few videos. Sorry, that's just not good enough. I probably shouldn't even have mentioned AIDS. I tried to provide another example. It's just I'm just going to lose people that are too dug into that story. But so forget that. OK, let's not. Let's break bread again t together. Look back. The Lyme disease is a much better example because number one, the, the deer tick, that's the key to this whole thing. Now, it didn't exist. Okay. It did not exist. You can't have, I walk through a few weeds here for just 10 feet and I have a deer tick on me. We're out in the 70s playing in the woods and the high grasses all day long and never get one. The deer tick is the key to the whole thing, not the bacterium or the disease. That's what that's the distraction. The deer tick didn't exist. All right. Now, okay, there'll be some story if you research it that it was from it was brought in on a cargo ship and it was it was from Africa or what there'll be a story how it got here and it started to spread. Whatever. I mean, but look, 
there's reality breakdowns associated with the deer tick itself, right? Somebody may say, Matt, they can create, these creeps probably created that species. It's a little nanobot or whatever. I mean, look, anything's possible. I'm not, I don't think the creeps can create a species. I really don't. You know, I've smushed a few hundred of them. I don't think it's a nanobot. And, you know, if you want to dig in and say they created that too on Plum Island, you know, I, I can't say you're wrong. Maybe they did. But I don't think they can create a species. I, you know, I don't think the, the powers of the creeps extend to that range. Let's just say they did create a species or they're playing with DNA or whatever, however you like. That triggers the truth community too. However you want to talk about it. Does it really matter? And somehow they Frankenstein this thing and now there's this thing called a deer tick. There's still reality breakdowns associated with it. Again, it's, there's no food. If there's hundreds of millions in the forest out here, maybe billions, okay, there's no food for it. It can only eat by sucking blood. There's not enough food. If every squirrel had 40,000 deer ticks on its back, there wouldn't nearly be enough for even 1%. What's it eating? How can it, it can just sit on a piece of grass? for year after year without having anything to eat, it's a reality breakdown to me that nobody talks about. There's not enough people, to, there's millions and tens of millions. There's no, there's, there's one squirrel every two miles. The skunks, there's no skunks anymore. The birds eat the damn things. They will pick the deer ticks off. They eat little tiny insects. What do they eat? And the, again, the big one for me, guys, was last, um, when we, you know, the Canadian fires, we got smoked out. New York, Philadelphia kept getting smoked out. It was dry as a bone. I know to many people around the country, they laughed at what I said, you know, a half hour ago. We had no drop, not a drop of rain for six, seven, eight weeks. And it was dry. That's a joke to a lot of people. They, you know, they go, they can go months and months without a drop of rain. I, I hear you. That's not normal here. It's usually in the Northeast is humid. And it's, it's like more like Georgia and Florida through, you know, get downpours every so many days. And the, the plants are used to that. Okay. So it, everything dries up here very quickly. And I just, for these, there's no way this tick population could have survived that if it's a real species. It's like, there's nothing to it. There, I mean, the, water is everything, guys, to life uh, in this realm, as you know. Um, there's ways each species protects itself and holds water. Trees in Arizona, uh, many are very, the bark is very, very smooth and is just expert at holding water more than a, an oak tree in Pennsylvania or Connecticut, for example. And uh, reptiles, they hold, everything needs to hold water. You can't hold water. How, you tell them these little. If you're not familiar with the deer ticks, they're just there's no shell on them. They're just this little. I mean, you can't even. You don't feel them when they're walking on you. This tiny little point. I, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe to you how small it is. You can't even see that it's a tick unless you're looking under a magnifying glass. I know immediately when one's on me because I get a little rash around where it's biting. Not that that's not the Lyme disease bullseye at all. My body immediately responds that there's an invader here. I start to get a red ring like a dime, a rash. That doesn't mean I have Lyme disease. It's just a body's reaction that there's an invader here. There's something that shouldn't be here. So I get tipped off by my body pretty quickly. But again, let's just seven, eight weeks last summer, no rain. Every one of them should have shriveled up, except the ones that, if it's a real species, made it down into the dirt to go into some sort of hibernation to wait it out for next year or to wait it. It's like millions and hundreds of millions. As soon as we got a little rain, just came right back. Or maybe hikers would stay. They still were getting them. It just, it, there's no, nothing in this reality that says that those ticks should be able to survive. There's not enough to eat. It's one food truck for all of New York City. And when there is like a extended drought, the popular, you know, the, the news person or the weather person should come on and say, well, you know, that sucked. We lost all of our shrubs and plants and the farmer's crops when we had this drought. But at least the at least the 99 percent of the deer tick population shriveled up and we don't have to worry about them till next year. That never happens. The deer tick itself to me is a reality breakdown. And I'm not in any way using those words incorrectly. Guys, I didn't come up with this this morning. I mean, something this crazy. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Well, I don't know. You know, say a year or just a little bit less than a year. But it's so nuts even to people in our own community. When I know still the old guard always surprises me and say, Matt, that's that's probably what happened. It's not that crazy. But it is crazy to a lot of people. I'm, I go over it in my mind, over it and over it. What is the problems 
with the theory? Where could where where is the theory not hold water, Miss Vito? I'm not going to do it. And it's like, well, it, to me, it does hold water. Um, we've seen if you know if you could think this is horseshit, but somebody might. It'd be funny to be Mandela affected and to think this theory's horseshit. You can't say the reality shifted over here without this also something like this also being a possibility. It's not always movie lines. That's the trivial stuff that the Not Nilk once people focused on. Um, it's not trivial trivial at all. As I've said, if you see the world as a place that just doesn't make any sense, and I always use the same example, but there is no better example. A, a whole ten percent of a high school is not sure if they're going to use the other restroom. There, there is no, there's no possible way. Now, I know it's not 10%, or, you know, I exaggerate, but the amount of millions and millions of young people that are just playing in some way with gender, even, even the pronoun has to do with that to a degree. I mean, nobody would have believed it uh, 20 years ago. Nobody, in our, nobody would have believed it, even people that see how crazy this reality can be. And as we learn that almost nobody is in on it, and even the very few that know kind of kind of how the reality works, you know, all we have to do, all we can say is creepy table and smoking room, and that's just a horrible eyes wide shut parties. That's not how it works either, but how else can we talk about it? Even those that, the creeps that have a little bit of understanding, the infrastructure isn't large enough to pull all this off. You still have to convince all these, you know, so all these these kids to be unsure about what they are. You still have to convince them then, then we, uh, you and I, come f- forth with, you know, again, lame terms, because we don't, how do you talk about this? The download, the frequency, the radio station. It's kind of, that's, you know, I'm, I guess on one hand, I'm, oh, I'm patting myself. Uh, Matt came, came up with this and was, was maybe ahead of the curve, but it's still, it's still just a 1% understanding of what really is happening, so it's not that great. But anyway, um, we would have never believed it. And um, it's, it's reality itself... Um, as we look at it, uh, can can morph and change, and I think this the main concept. If you don't like the Lyme disease um, example, then disease itself. You know, to me, disease itself, the amount of diseases, the amount of drug commercials that talk about certain diseases, that is a reality shift to me as in a reaction to a lowering or, or collective consciousness going into a, a darker place. Yeah, of course. You know, that it's just not as simple as people say, Matt, the drug companies need to make their money and they'll create these diseases. You know, okay, that's part of it, like I said, but it, that, that doesn't explain it. It's not all, you know, the first grade truther, you know, doesn't go to these big places. And again, I'm not saying all this is always right, and, but the first grade truther, it's always plotted and planned and it's always, it's all faked and it's all secret societies and Tavistock and that's all, you know, at least... Maybe this is horseshit, but at least I'm, I look in other places. And it does. Usually this reality is so strange. It's so fluid. The most logical explanation does always come back to reality itself or a manipulation of reality itself or a reaction of reality itself by the actions of creeps. Whether what is manifesting in reality is intended by the creeps or not. Whether what's manifesting in reality is expected or unexpected by the creeps. I'm sure there's a lot of shit. I'm not sure, but you know what I mean. There's a lot of crap where the creeps in their Chernobyl or Three Mile Island control room centers. Oh, shit. Based on, it's like, how many movies are like this? Based on what we did over here, what's changing over there? The, we did the Yang over there, and we perverted this and adulterated this, and, we, and we're, it's reality on the back end is doing this? Oh, shit, we didn't even want that. What do we do? <laughs> how do we fix it? Well, let's, let's fuck with something over here. It's like there's that Star Trek, was it? I guess it was Voyager episode where there's an advanced ship from 8,000 years in the future, but it's still the Federation, and it's a time ship. And they he wants to go back and make certain corrections and bring a planet back to life or whatever. But every time they do their time incursion, of course, they fix kind of what they want to fix, but all this stuff over here gets fucked up. It's kind of like what they do. You know, it's like they can never get it, all, get it right. 
And then the commander's never satisfied. It's kind of coming back to me like, we restored Sir through this time inversion and they have a time ship or whatever. 90% of the reality we want is restored. And the one guy's like, let's just leave well enough alone. We got 90% of what we won. The guy's like, it's not good enough. We need to, was, is my wife alive in this reality? No, we need to go for it again. And then of course, the next time they, they meddle over here, then it's, then it's only 2% restored and 98% fucked up. But that's generally... In a way that creeps, I'm not saying they have a time ship. Of course, I'm not. I'm not saying that. But the meddling, the meddling. It's a rubber band. It's a, that something will snap back, and part of the snapback is our understanding about ourselves and who we are, and our understanding of how this reality works and our place in it. And I think they're willing to give that to us. I think they're willing to. Say, you know, it's like uh, in maybe a, a meeting a long time ago. All, this is all we can talk about: smoking rooms. And like, meh, meh, Chern- Chernobyl. Oh, this is the this is the Three Mile Island uh, control center where China Syndrome uh, came out ten ten days. Was it ten days before? <laughs> the, the Jane Fonda and her workout routine in the in the China Syndrome came out ten days before uh, the quote end quote real nuclear scare. Uh, right an hour and 20 minutes from here, Three Mile Island plant. And I remember my aunt like, oh, I'm pregnant. Should I, can I, should I come to Philly and, and live with family members down there? What do I do? And everybody's all panicked and shit. And it's like, so, I mean, some of, one of, somebody in the family should have had a clue way back when and said, um, the China Syndrome about the exact same thing just hit the movie theaters. I think, I, guys, I, I'm, I'm not looking at it now. Was it, was it 10 days before or two weeks or even if it was six months before, like who cares? It's still it's still too much of a coincidence. Matt, are you saying you don't? Buy, of course, I'm saying I don't buy it be, because of that. I probably wouldn't believe in it anyway. <laughs> Let alone when there's some sort of ridiculous coincidence attached to it or assigned, like like the movie again, the the China Syndrome. And regarding, I mean, I don't. I'm sorry if this is straying a bit, guys, but um, the HBO bot, the HBO series Chernobyl. In terms of of that, and the um, I mean, there's there's some 33s dropped right at the very end of Chernobyl, um, and some other reasons that you know. Um, yeah, let's just say from Ben Affleck in uh, Goodwill Hunting, you suspect. Let's just put it that way. Retainer, you want us to pay you cash now? Yeah, I don't know who you think you're dealing with in this town. How much? I have sixty five dollars. Give it to me. In terms of what we're talking about here, there's another reference from Silence of the Lambs that's appropriate. You know, we've talked about it many times. You know, what does he do, Clarice, this man you seek? He kills women. No, that is incidental, Clarice, and your shoes don't match your bag. You look like a rube. Well, what's a rube? It doesn't matter, Clarice. Just get yourself a new shoes and bag. Um, what does he do, this man you seek? Read Marcus Aurelius, First Principles of a Thing. That is incidental. He does not kill women. He does that for other reasons. What does this thing do that we seek to understand? Uh, It tries to move collective consciousness into a lower place? Yes, but that is incidental to its one mission. It's always one sentence. To disrupt and destroy the spiritual journey and to not allow a real spiritual being to get out of this life what it needs. Everything it does is incidental to that. But one of its main ways of doing that, of course, just one rung lower on the org chart is moving collective consciousness to a lower frequency into a darker place. That is its first principles. And what I'm saying here, although it's been long-winded and a little bit insane, it's very simple. If you can do that, you can move the collective consciousness, then is anybody out there listening to the words coming out of my mouth think there's no price to pay on the back end? No snapback? No yin to yang reaction? Well, of course there's going to be. So if you might not like my explanation, this is where I, I might look for it in terms of diseases popping up and in the 70s and 80s, like nobody had, there were some unhealthy people, but none of this existed. So I'm looking for the snapback. I'm looking for the reaction in reality itself. You don't think there's a price to pay for all the big bites they've taken? Do you think the yin yang is potentially the most famous ancient symbol of all time for a reason or just because it was a pretty picture. I think whenever something is that prominent in reality, there's a reason for it. You can go back to Einstein, one of the laws of relativity. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And I know that law and these other laws are used to build bullet trains and they're, they're applicable to real physics. 
But the way this reality works, hint, hint, there's usually a second or third meaning or interpretation that is just as real, that tells you about reality. Just because it can be used and it is used to build a factory or to build a missile or whatever, for every action there's an equal, if you send the damn liquid fuel out the bottom of a missile, the thing, the damn tin can thing's going to shoot up in the air. Yeah, it's used to build real things. That doesn't mean that just because, oh, it's, it's, that's all it is, that, that then gets my attention that it could be much more, that there's another meaning. For every action of these creeps messing with a consciousness, a collective of real spiritual beings more powerful than themselves, then there's an equal and opposite reaction. So in this video, I'm looking for where that reaction's showing up. You think, have they messed with the collective consciousness a little bit? Have they messed with us? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah. So where, what is the back end snapback is what I'm saying. Where's the equal and opposite reaction? Is the negative reaction just that the Sixers, the Philadelphia 76ers and a lazy and fat Joel Embiid are going to go out in the first round of the basketball playoffs? No, it's if they're messing with reality itself, then what's going to snap back on the back end is going to be massive and it's going to be potential reality shift of some kind or a new disease or whatever and they know how it works, they're going to cover it up with their bullshit stories and their truthers and their Jesse Ventura presentations. So, Matt, didn't Matt, didn't you know that there is a weapons facility that uh, they were weaponizing? Tick, da, 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 da. Oh, I had, no, you know, I, and I had no idea. See how those stories are a little too convenient? You think what we're dealing with here, not milk, a spiritual adversary? You think it's a pushover? You think it's not a worthy adversary? Just so it's going to be leaked out to some idiot truthers that make their videos and then convince y'all tr broke truth ass because they make their videos. No, it's going to be a little bit more sophisticated than that. Maybe our uh, pondering in these sort of insane places is sometimes going to be wrong, but at least it's an exercise in big thinking. It's just not bowing down to the yellow pissed on breadcrumbs that they're constantly trying to give us. Thanks for listening.